Hey guys, BBI here. I want to stop and say thanks. Thanks for tuning in and checking out whatever the video is about that's about ready to come up next. If you could take a minute and hit subscribe, I'd greatly appreciate it. And if you enjoy what you've seen here, make sure to hit the like button. We'd greatly appreciate your support. Anyhow, guys, all that aside, let's get on with the show. Well, hi ho little neighbors. Today on Mr. BBI's Amplifier Neighborhood, we're going to look at a BMK amplifier. And that's BMK, by the way. Otherwise built by Junebug. Um, it's a little bit of an older model, but it still holds true. Built in an RCA manufacturing cabinet. With literally the cheapest fan money can buy in the lid. Looks like it's actually got bias in it, and I'm not too sure what the problem is on the inside, because I haven't opened it yet. Let's see what we find. Hmm. Took a little page out of the BBI book there we did. Instead of using two 10 waters, he's using a singular, singular, 25 watt. Well, that's interesting. It's our 12 volt coming in. Switched bias. It's got 12 volt on this side. What in the hell? It's even hooked up. This goes directly to ground. This is a class CM. Check it out. Some kind of remote plug, I'm assuming, for the fan. Fan's been bypassed off the plug. Hooked up to the remote. The absolute most rudimentary as possibly can get. Preamp, wrong size cap there. Wrong size cap there. But we're not judging before we try and run it. Oh, we're drifting. We're drifting, BBI. Why weren't you guys yelling at me through the camera? Come on now. Okay, so. Um, this would be amp number three for the same customer at this point. We drift in again. No, we're staying locked on target this time. He sent all of these to me, and I think he's going to be letting this go. Now, this has got actual real deal, yeah, IJ Toshiba's in it. Um, ICA Fat, tra uh, Fat Boy Transformers. Definitely got heavy duty enough power wire going on. So let's see what we got. I don't see any burned up 10 ohm smoke detectors. It's a 2290 driving four 2879 Toshibers. Yeah, preamp is lighting up for sure. Let's hook up the rest of our coaxes and then we can actually test it. What do you think? I think that would be a good idea. Okay, so the preamp works. Hello. A little low on the output power there. Hello, hello, hello. Hello. working too bad to be honest with you I mean I want to find something wrong with this box so I can do my McNasty to it but I mean in all fairness and the never-ending challenge to be transparent let's turn off the amplifier amp is off hello that's our drive hello from a 200 watt standing carrier. Hello. Input reflex a little high, but not T-bag. Let's go up here and take a look at it. Five watt slug between the 2950. 
Ha -do. Like I said, not the worst in the world, not overly great. And let's go on over here and we'll take a look at it on the spectrum analyzer. Not too bad. Ha -do. Really not all that bad at all. I've seen way worse. I'm not going to lie. Probably get a little bit more out of it if we weren't using voltage divider technology up in here. What do you mean by voltage divider technology? This here. Uh, this bias circuit will never work. Never ever will it never ever. Could it ever never ever. Would it never ever work. So, let me show you. Thank God it's class C or it probably would have popped the transistors. Now I know that bias is an expression of current, not an expression of voltage, but I want to show you something here. If you were to hook up the biasing choke to this leg the way he's got it laid out to do it. It would blow all the transistors out because it's putting 14 volts and 100% of current potential directly to the device. But if we were to hook up over here, it would still be wrong. Hello, how do you go? There's not a voltage present. Now this is technically the correct resistor, but the wrong diode and the fact the diode's in upside down so there's no load it's not presenting load to the circuit we'll probably reuse this resistor we'll scoot it over a little bit i'll probably hang a couple caps off the end of it down here to ground to help knock it out of resonance we'll extend this wire and then we'll bring this on that'll pick up our output current just a little bit our output watts just a little bit um really not all that bad Place this disc capacitor with a metal clad. I think we'll be in top titties. I definitely don't have to do a power wire upgrade on the input. Now, this, I don't want to say is woefully inadequate, but I'll say it's better than what most are. So, in all fairness, other than the sideband not ever being hooked up, the actual bias, I don't think you could quite figure that out or something. I don't know. Um, we're gonna fix this. I got the right diode for here. We gotta change this circuit over here. It looks pretty. Let's see if our sideband delay is actually working. It is not. Remarkably the same speed. So, okay. All we gotta do is polish the turret a little bit and it'll be a gem. The parts at the heart of the matter are good. We know that, and that is something I would never do. I just caught this, I just caught this. I would never, ever, would I never, ever do this. Oh, 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 tripod. You give the best. Here, hold on. If I twist this little knob, I can slide you back a little bit further, shift our center of mass of the camera, and then I can go back and use the float. Fluid dampened ball bearing Manfrotto or Man, Manfrotta or whatever it is. Tripod mount. Okay, I would never do this. This is something you would never in a million years catch me doing. Putting this cap underneath this heat source because this frigger gets hot holy hot holier than holier than holy hot but for the record this wire right here is supposed to be attached to this side of the resistor and we can bring this wire over and we'll attach it to this side of the resistor or flip flop it bring the 12 volt here and actually have our load diode over here one of the two we'll make it happen captain Well, at least these are the right value cap. We'll have to change this capacitor as well, and change this capacitor as well. 
we'll eliminate this resistor here and I bet you we can get a couple more watts out of it. So this is making 980 watts, which is not too bad. It's really not. It's really not. That didn't get loose and float around inside the cabinet. Um, <clears throat> non Teflon based wire pinned down with, so this is rubberized wire pinned down by a soldered lead. That's not a fire hazard. Never seen this go bad for anybody in history ever. Um, what do we notice that's wrong here? We have a ground connection here. No ground connection here. That's electrically incorrect and not safe. Backed up with electrically not safe right here on this plug. Our sideband delay is buried up in here where it should be is back here. Once again it's a soft speaker wire. This is rubberized wire. Not safe. It's on the 12 volt side of things. This is ground, so it's really not all that bad, but it's a hot summer day, let's say. Pretend, let's pray. Actually, this is ground, this side here, and this here is actually our hot wire. It's a hot summer day, and we know this wire breaks down at about 280 degrees. The uh, the, oh God, poly, ethyl, bethyl, buta, all, teterol, frickin' teterol, cutterol. Um, the rubber jacket that's on this will melt just at a couple hundred degrees. We've got it running over a saw, our hard abrasive surface. So it's hit, sitting here vibrating over the years. It's a hot summer day, it's a hundred and whatever degrees so it sinks in the cabinet and the whole amp starts to get up to temperature uh, what happens this wire is at 130 40 degrees you reach back fire your box up start talking this wire is already lost two-thirds of its ability to insulate itself either from vibration or rub wear we're not going to talk about this anymore same thing right here okay this is why this is so unsafe reach back fire your box up start talking now you're piping 130 degree air in here to cool it and it starts adding heat to it. Well, the end of the heat sinks right here and it's going to wick straight through the board. What do you think happens here? I mean, I mean seriously, what, what do you think happens? And then we have a massive fire that takes place. Short it out, flames and fire. That's got to be changed. That's not safe. It's electrically incorrect and not, not safe. I, po I put all of this forth for you guys to look at. If this had been fluttering around and let's say managed to get in here and just kind of make contact between, I don't know, we'll say here and here. Poof, we have a fire. Or here and here, we have a fire. Or 
let's say it flutters down in here, shorts out here, and it blows your driver transistor up. Well, it's going to disappear in a little quick arc of smoke. Then you're going to open it. I don't know what happened. I'm open it up and look inside, and you're going to be like, I don't, I don't know. Meanwhile, box no work no more. This has to be deleted completely. You can use rubberized wire, you know, um, uh, PVC based wire in certain spots in the box. As long as they're contained, they don't have any hard contact or hard rub surface on them, like here or like this setup here. It's okay to use them on your power distribution leads like the way I do. Um, that and trying to work with Teflon that same size is a bitch. But that's the reason my transformers have got the hole cut in the back and the hole cut in the front. There's no rub wear and it's on a flat surface. So we don't have to worry about shock load to the wire, heat transference to the wire, none of that stuff. That's how I can kind of skate that rule. Um, you know, because I plan ahead and I have my own parts made, but this here, this is unsafe. That and there's no, um, I guess it'd be a shock snubbing diode. Uh, it's not a shock key diode, but the snubbing diode that takes place at the end of any, any relay coil. So we'll add a diode here. We'll move our keying capacitor, or our keying delay capacitor over here for sideband. At least it's got a big transistor for the keying circuit. It can handle both relays. And, um, I'm going to fix this, make this so this is electrically sound. So I'll disconnect this wire, I'll probably strip the jacket back to here, solder it, pin it down to this solder joint to make it look stock so it's clean. Um, we're going to actually engage our sideband bias, make that correct. And, no, oh, more to come, just more to come. Well, here we are at the end of this tale, and how this is going to end is going to shock most of you guys. So. Here's all the parts I changed. Fan. The rusted fan guard's been replaced. The biasing circuit, which um, we covered thoroughly in the last couple segments of video, would never work. Apparently this diode was just cut and it was being held in place with this resistor. So I'm glad nobody tried to hook up the biasing circuitry in this. Replaced all the rubberized wire. Um, power wire upgraded to the one pill section and rebuilt the bias circuit so let's go look at all of this in here we'll start here in the back end of the box um, I changed out the orange disc capacitor to an all uh, metal clad capacitor for our output tune um, I hooked up our bias our relay wires appropriately hooked up um, a snubbing diode appropriately actually added a choke to the positive side of things, added a choke to the output positive side of things, which was absent, put the right resistors in here with the right diodes, with the right capacitors, right disc capacitors in here for bias, brought bias online, so now it's fully biased class B. Of course, obviously we did the power wire upgrade here on the four pill final section. We also did the power wire upgrade that feeds the one pill driver section. We did the voltage divider delete from the driver section to the final section, which will help put it out more. Upgraded the uh, sideband delay capacitor. Then down here, we did the, um, the wire delete that I was talking about. And then also soldered the coax down so it'd be electrically correct. Um, changed a little couple things in here, like this cap, this cap, that cap, just like what we talked about. And the end result is this. Let's go on over here. It's a thousand watt slug in peak, thousand in average, and a five watt slug in reverse. So right now, let me demonstrate to you first. Click that down in sideband. We can hear the delay. We actually have a decent delay now, instead of it being instant, so when it's on sideband, the relays aren't going to chatter. Click the switch up into AM. 
Hello, audio. Okay. Now let's come over and look at the spectrum analyzer. Let's see which way is cleaner. Oh, squealing, squealing. My way, if you go back and compare it to the previous segment, my way is obviously way cleaner in power. And I'm going to come over here. Let's take a look at our watt meter. I'll show you input drive. We're on the same voltage, 14.9 as yesterday. Hello, audio. 30 watts worth of drive. Hello. Almost off the scale there. Hello. Yesterday we were lucky to get 850 out of it. Now we're getting closer to 1,000, actually over. Um, let's talk about this. This is our lid. Like I said, I got rid of this little tiny uh, quarter amp piece of shit, never cool anything fan, which I think was kind of broken. But and then I deleted the fan, this, this Chinese less than a penny fan guard grill that was broken with a nice finger hanger on it there. Got rid of that, put a brand new stainless steel chrome plated uh, fan guard not to rust. Put that on there, so that's another upgrade. Hold on, let me put the lid on it. Let's test run it from there. Well, this is the end. This is the end, my friends. So what we got here is a really clean, all Toshiba based, one by four, that's thousand watts. Um, I did try to sell this in my group and it just did not seem to, nobody was quite understanding what they needed to do. So instead of going on with that, I thought I'd pull back on that idea and I'll just come over here and I'll make this go away on the YouTube channel. Now, I did have a couple guys say that it would probably be a good bet for me to get rid of the BMK sticker that's on here. I'm not a big fan of that. People suggest all kinds of things. Um, I, I did probably a 40% rebuild on this box. Okay, I'm not the guy that initially put it together. And just because I went in and I changed some stuff and made it work a little bit better and changed out the fan, it still means it's a BMK box. I know this guy left a lot of really negative, I don't know, flavors <laughs> in people's, uh, people's mouths all over the world through his thousands upon thousands of negative posts and all the crazy stuff that went on with him there towards the end of his business. But I'm not going to take from the man by taking a sticker off the box. Now, if you'd like me to, Whoever ends up buying this would like me to re remove the sticker professionally. I have the I have the machinery to do that, but it's not a big deal. But I'm not going to get out here and make a big show of it and take the sticker off the guy's box. It's been reworked. Everything in here is right. I'll stand behind the box 100% from this point forward. I own it, basically, in my mind. It gets the same warranty and the same service as anything I've ever built. So I'm just going to leave it sit just like that. If you want it, great. Come get it. If you don't want the sticker on there, I'll take it off. It's not that big of a deal. But uh, it's just the way I roll. Anyhow, gentlemen, um, I think what we're going to ask for this thing is uh, 1100 or best offer. It's the exact same thing I did in my group. And nobody quite understood what the heck we were doing. It's kind of funny. I went up in there and said, okay, guess what? Facebook exclusive offer. And everybody's like, what? 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 what, what? <laughs> it is what it is. You guys know how this works. First one here, first one to call, first one come knocking, first one, first one gets it. All Toshiba based, which these are gonna become incredibly rare. Now RF parts ain't got none. These high dollar highfalutin nice Japanese transistors are gonna get harder and harder to get. Gentlemen, my name is BBI. Give me a call, you guys know what to do from here. I'll see ya. Bye.